When I started university, I already had a little bit of a complex because I thought I wasn't going to be good enough to compete with the other students in my course. I thought maybe they made a mistake admitting me. It was pretty competitive and I didn't really feel like I belonged. There's a little bit of a imposter syndrome going on. Uh, I remember making one friend who told me about her favorite book of all time and she said I just absolutely had to read it. Uh, and that book was Frederick Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Varasustra. I remember picking this book up on her recommendation and reading through it over the course of a couple weeks, finishing it and not knowing what the heck I had just read. I mean, this book was so over my head at the time that I just, I, it made me feel like I just didn't know what I was talking about and like I just didn't belong. I just wasn't smart enough to keep up with, uh, with the other people who were in my, in my course. And that really was something that, that left an impression on me because it really shook my confidence and it took me a long time to realize that there are techniques and there are methods for reading things that are hard so that you don't need to feel like you're not smart enough to grasp certain books. Um, and you just need to kind of figure out what those technique, techniques are and it can really open up a whole new world for you. What's up everyone, my name is Adam, aka a dude who reads, and in today's video I want to share with you a few tips that I've picked up over the years for how to read books that are a little bit harder than what you would normally read. So I'm going to split this video up into sort of three parts. The first two parts are going to be based on the answer to the question, why are you reading this book in the first place? So what is it that you're trying to accomplish by reading this really difficult book? And generally speaking, the answer to this question is going to fall into one of two categories. Either A, you're reading this difficult book because you're trying to achieve some specific objective. So get a specific piece of knowledge or learn a certain skill or, you know, just, you know, there's something in there that you're trying to get out of the book. Or B, you are reading this difficult work, diff difficult book, difficult piece because you are trying to challenge yourself intellectually to grow. And so those two different reasons for reading are going to come with their own kind of set of tools for how you should approach the task. So in the first part of the video, I want to talk about how to approach uh, books that have a specific objective, where you have a specific objective in mind. And in the second part of the video, I'm going to tackle books where your goal in reading the book is really just to try and grow as a person. And in the third and final part of the video, uh, I just want to talk about a few general principles that you need to apply when you're reading books that are a little bit harder than what you normally read. So when you're reading books where you have a specific objective in mind and something you're trying to achieve going into that book and you're trying to really get a specific thing out of the book, uh, my suggestion here is going to be to start with understanding that you don't need to make your life a living hell. So we have kind of been taught through our education system that you need to read a book from beginning to end and you kind of need to struggle with the contents of that book and come up with your own original thoughts about what that book says and you need to draw as much knowledge as you can out of that book. Or at least that was my experience going to school and I know from talking to other people that was their experience as well. The reality is if you're, whether you're in school or you're out of school, if you're trying to learn a specific thing from books, you need to kind of get away from this uh, this expectation that you placed on yourself. So the first thing you want to do when you're reading a book where you're trying to get something specific out of that book is to try and get some context around it. Read around the book. So what I mean by that is if, for example, let's say you're reading and we're going to pick an example that you guys have heard me talk about a million times before if you watch this channel. If you're reading War and Peace and War and Peace is a difficult book for you because it's just so massive and it deals with a very specific period of history and there's just so many characters, one of the ways you can make reading that book a little bit easier for you is to familiarize yourself with the time period in which it's set. And so you can read pieces about uh, the history of that time. You could read stuff about uh, the Russian Revolution. You could read stuff about Napoleonic Wars. Uh, any little thing that will help you get more information so that when you go into the book, the sort of peripheral stuff that is in there, you already have a good grasp of, and it's not all completely new to you. The other thing you want to do is you really want to look for connected materials or secondary sources. This is something that took me a really long time to figure out. So I went to law school and when I started law school, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know the proper way to study. I didn't really know the proper way to learn from books. I had really had a very easy academic career up until that point. And so I was a little bit out to sea. And so when I started my courses, we would be given these hundreds upon hundreds of pages of readings every class. 
A lot of them are Supreme Court decisions that are 150 pages long, written by these incredibly intelligent Supreme Court justices, but who apparently never learned the value of brevity. And so these things would go on and on and on forever. And so you would spend hours and hours and hours poring over these texts with these really complicated terms, referring back to these precedents that you have not read yet, uh, all introducing these principles that you have not yet learned. And you're trying to absorb all this stuff, and there's just so much volume that by the time you get to the end of it, you have gleaned absolutely nothing aside from highlighting a whole bunch of passages that didn't really stick in your mind in the first place. And so I struggled through my first year of law school kind of trying to absorb as much information as possible. And it was really only in my second year that I realized that I'd been doing this entire thing completely wrong. And it was only when I talked to some students who had a little bit more academic experience than me that I realized the mistake I'd been making. The primary mistake I'd been making was I had been focused solely on the primary sources. So that's to say the original decisions, the original court cases that we were assigned in our reading. The best students in our class didn't focus on the primary sources, they went to secondary sources. So a secondary source is a piece of writing about the primary source. So rather than spending a ton of time trying to dissect the case and trying to figure out what the heck the Supreme Court justice is talking about, they would go and they would find commentaries and analyses about the case. So all of that work that I was trying to figure out as this you know, first year law student who knows absolutely nothing, they were going to the greatest legal minds in the world and getting them to tell them exactly what they should be looking for in this case. Now, the challenge with this for a lot of us is it kind of feels like cheating, right? I, I just haven't, I haven't done the work of analyzing this work. And, and so isn't it wrong for me just to take someone else's opinions and adopt them as my own? And this is really the part where when we're talking about how to read hard books, this is the mental block that we need to get over. You have to take for granted the fact that there is no right or wrong way to read a text. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with reading something that tells you how to interpret a text. Where you can go wrong is if the only thing you do when you're trying to learn a new piece of material is if you are solely focused on a single person's opinion who is not the original author of the work, and that is the only thing you base yourself on, that is how you can lead yourself down a dangerous path of adopting opinions that were not in the original text or taking a very slanted view of things, but if you take the time to read these secondary sources, and if ideally you read multiple secondary sources giving you different perspectives, and then in addition to that, you also go back and you read the original source, what you then have is once you get to the original source, everything will make perfect sense to you because you'll already have people that are explaining it to you. And this is not cheating. There's nothing wrong with this, right? Because there is no one out there who really truly expects someone who has no basis in anything at all to come into a work for the first time and understand it cold. The whole purpose of using these secondary sources is we're talking about people who have made a career out of studying this stuff in depth. They have hundreds, if not thousands of read material under their belt, and they're applying it to the stuff that you're now reading for the first time. So why should I be expected as someone who's coming to this material fresh to be able to deduce the same amount of stuff that someone who has spent years and years of their life thinking about. You cannot be expected as a pure novice to read something complicated for the first time and really understand all the nuances. And I think a lot of times when people are reading difficult works for the first time, this is the mistake they're trying to make. They're putting the pressure on themselves of someone who has years of experience when in fact they should be taking the novice approach and getting someone who knows more than them to explain the work to them. And if you're not doing that in the form of a lecture, or you're not doing that in the form of someone teaching you verbally or orally, the best way to do that is to go and look for people who know this stuff and who have written about it and to read their material as well. Another way you can put this into practice is to read book summaries. So book summaries are something that have existed for a really long time and over the last few years, they've gotten really, really popular. There is a right and a wrong way to use book summaries. The wrong way to use book summaries is to read a book summary and use it as a replacement for the book. So this is the people who say, I read a thousand books last year when really all they did was read a thousand book summaries. The risk when you do that is A, you can't be sure that a book summary is covering all of the most important points in a book. And B, part of the value of reading a book is struggling through it. That is what allows you to retain the information that's in it. If you are just reading the book summary, because book summaries are so easy to, to digest and they're so easy to read, you're not going to retain anything. Uh, years and years ago, I was subscribed to a service where I would get these book summaries 
And I must have read probably hundreds of book summaries over the course of about six months. And I unsubscribed from that service because I realized that of those hundreds of books that I had read, I had retained absolutely nothing. In some cases, I didn't even remember the titles of the books that I was reading. So a better way of using book summaries is to use book summaries as a supplement or as a pre-read to reading the actual thing that you're going to read. And what you want to look for is you want to look for book summaries that go beyond just trying to condense a 300 or 400 page book into two or three pages, but that really go into more analysis that try and connect it with other things. And that will allow you to kind of think a little bit more deeply about the material. And one of the tools that I found that does this really well is a app called Shortform, which does which takes books and gives you not just a simple summary of the book, but that also goes into analysis. It uh, relates it to other books. It asks you questions about it to uh, engender deeper learning. I have really found this as a great tool to really look into more complicated works and to kind of break them down a little bit more before I actually get into the works themselves. One of the ways that I've used this recently is I looked up Anti-Fragile by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Uh, so uh, Taleb has written a series of books about these events that are sort of unpredictable. So things like black swan, so these unpredictable events, anti-fragile, this notion that uh, the opposite of something that is fragile isn't just something that is strong, but it's rather something that is anti-fragile. So something that it gets much uh, stronger when it takes damage. And so the, uh, the, the, the theory behind this stuff is actually much more complex than you would originally think. And so reading this book, dry as a, as a first run was a, something that I struggled with a little bit. So I went to short form. I read through the summary. I read through the analysis. Uh, I answered some of those discussion questions and I went back into the book and I found that it really helped me absorb the information a lot better. Short form actually reached out to me and offered to partner with us at this channel. So if it's something that you're interested in, you could go to shortform.com slash a dude who reads, and you'll be getting a discount of up to 20% on an app annual subscription which already the annual subscription is a huge discount over the monthly subscription. And if you do decide to use this, there will be, you will be supporting the channel at the same time. Short form of all the, uh, of all the tools like this out there, it's the one that I have used and it's the one that I have enjoyed the most. So something for viewers of this channel, if you're interested, take a look. So in addition to using secondary sources, using book summaries and analyses, the other thing that you want to be doing when you are trying to get a specific piece of information out of a complicated piece of work, is you're gonna to wanna to reread things multiple times because the first time you read something, really you're just familiarizing yourself with it and you're only really gonna be ingesting the real knowledge after a couple of reads. And so the good thing about when you're trying to find a specific piece of information is you don't need to reread a work in its entirety. You can focus specifically on those areas where you have found the most value. So you can use your first read to just kind of call out those places where there's the important information and then come back and look at those areas specifically where the most important information is to be found. In addition to uh, doing that reread, you can also use this second pass to say, okay, I've understood 90% of this stuff, the 10% that's missing, now I can go and search for other sources that are gonna help me understand this. And this can be in the form of other books, articles, uh, scholarly articles, it could even be YouTube videos because there's a lot of information that's out there and you don't have to do all of your learning from books. The real goal here is to acquire a specific piece of information. However you go about doing that is gonna be completely okay. Okay, the second reason that you are gonna to want to read difficult books is if you are trying to challenge yourself to grow and you're trying to sort of set yourself this kind of intellectual hurdle that you're trying to clear. And let's be honest, for a lot of us who are, if you're watching a video like this on YouTube where you watch videos about books, that's probably a little bit of who you are, right? You read because it's not just something that's enjoyable, it's something where you like to challenge yourself and you're not just gonna keep reading fifth grade level books all the time, you wanna challenge yourself to kind of clear the bar. So in those cases, going out and looking for secondary sources and looking for summaries and stuff like that, that's not really going to be what you wanna do because what you're really trying to do is you're trying to push yourself to understand this more difficult piece of work. So how do we approach this without getting completely demoralized? So first things first, you want to adopt uh, an approach which uh, I'm, I haven't coined this term. I don't remember where I first heard it, but I think it's fantastic. And that term is superficial reading. Superficial reading is something that we have been taught to avoid for a large part of our academic lives because it feels like we're not getting enough out of the work. We feel like, especially those of us who 
read the types of books where we feel like we're trying to challenge ourselves. We feel like if you read superficially, you're missing out on a whole part of the text. And so we feel like when we read, we need to be taking notes in the margins. We need to be highlighting. We need to be keeping notes on the side somewhere else. And while yes, all of that stuff is an important part of interacting with a piece of work, it is really one of the things that is going to come later in your experience. So the only way to really grasp a piece of work that is super challenging is to start by giving yourself permission to not understand everything. So what you want to do when you're reading superficially is do exactly that. Pick up a book, and this is one of the few times that I'm actually going to recommend that you do this. Pick up a book, open it to the first page, and then read it all the way to the end. Never pick up a pencil, never jot down a note, don't highlight anything, don't dog your pages, just read through it and try to understand it at the most basic superficial level. If I go back to my example of Thus Spoke Zarathustra, if you were to do that with this book, what you would find is essentially a parable, right? So Thus Spoke Zarathustra is about a, uh, a hermit that has all of this knowledge, and the entire work, which is obviously a work of philosophy, is told in the form of a parable. If you were to use this superficial reading of the book, what you want to do is on your first pass, just understand how the parable goes about. How does, how does this hermit get introduced? What is the narrative arc? How does the story end? What is the main point? Without going into all the nuances and details and trying to analyze and trying to relate it to other piece of philosophy, all of this is going to come way later. Read it as if it's a children's storybook. The whole purpose of this is because when you do that, you're actually probably, you're probably absorbing more than half of the book itself. The rest of the nuances you will be able to grab at a later time. If you can just grab the most superficial meaning of the work, and put it down after the fact, and just be okay with the fact that you didn't understand everything, you'll realize that now you've got a basis on which you can start to build a much stronger uh, structure, right? So you've laid down a foundation on which you can lay down a much stronger structure. Now, obviously you're gonna say, but if I do that, I won't really have understood what I read, so what's the point? I've just wasted my time, right? And you might be right if you stop there. But a superficial reading is only really helpful if it's the first step in a much longer process. And I say much longer process, really this process can be as long as you want. Because remember, at this point, this stage, what we're doing is we're reading for our own intellectual growth. There's no competition here. There's no, uh, there's no timer that's running. There's no assignment that's due. Really, all we're trying to do here is to challenge ourselves. It's like you're going to the gym and you're working out your muscles. No one says how much you have to be lifting by next week, right? The whole goal is to just keep getting stronger. So even if it takes you a year to read a book and really fully understand everything that's in that book, that doesn't matter because if every time you're going through it, you're learning something, you're challenging yourself, you're growing your understanding, you're expanding your horizons, that's enough. So we need to kill these preconceived notions. So once you have done your first superficial read, now you're going to go back and you're going to do your reread. And this is when you're going to really do all of that stuff that you probably wanted to do on the first pass. And I say you probably wanted to do this because if you're the type of person who's doing this type of reading, I know who you are. You are that type A personality who can't read a book without a pen in your hand, without taking notes, without highlighting, without putting marginalia. Maybe you don't want to deface the book itself, but you're definitely taking notes elsewhere. I know you. I know you because I am you. And all I'm saying is at the first stage, resist that temptation. Because when you go back and you reread the book, you no longer have to put your mind through the exercise of understanding the basic structure because you've already got the basic structure. Now you can devote all your attention to understanding those nuances and to digging deeper into those aspects that you kind of want to uh, really delve into. It also means that if you've already read the book once from end to end, you can now on the second read, pause and research something a little bit more deeply without breaking the entire flow of the book because you already know what's going to happen next. You already know how the argument is going to develop. You know how all the next pieces fall into place. So by pausing and researching something on your second read, you don't disrupt any flow. If you were to do that on your first read, by the time you were done doing your research and you came back to the book, you would have completely lost the flow of the narrative, of the argument, of the structure of the book, of all of it. So a first superficial read is an absolutely essential tool if you're going to use do a second read where you're going to pause and do additional research and you're going to look things up and maybe you're going to read some, uh, some secondary sources and maybe you'll do some research on the internet or maybe you'll actually go to a, a library, God forbid, 
Maybe you'll call some people up, some experts in the field, whatever you want to do. The first uh, initial superficial read is going to give you the permission to do all this stuff without breaking the flow. And I want to reiterate that if your goal in reading a difficult book is to grow as a person, as to challenge yourself, the most important thing here is not to put any time limits on this. You want to take as much time as you need to really understand all the concepts. Because if you really want to dive into this deeper, what you're really going to want to do is you're going to want to do an initial read, then you're going to want to do a reread that has additional research to it. You're going to want to understand as much of that book as possible. But if it's just this book that you're reading, chances are even then your comprehension, if it's a really tough book, might only be at 80, 85%. So then you're going to put that book away and then you're going to go read another book that might be related. It might be not related. And then you're going to come back to this first book at a later date. And you're going to bring the additional experience that you gained from the other books you read back to this book. And suddenly that 80 to 85% comprehension will jump to 90 or 95%. And this is how you approach reading difficult books. And this is what is going to allow you to grow as a person, how you can grow your personal body of knowledge. So regardless of whether you're trying to read difficult books to uh, learn a specific item or to learn a specific subject or skill, or you're just reading them as a way to grow intellectually, there are really three things that I want to say that you really absolutely should be trying to do, three principles that should inform all of your reading. The first is you need to break all of your preconceived notions about how you should read books. Read the books in whatever way is going to allow you to get that information or that's going to allow you to grow your own personal body of knowledge. That means you don't need to read a book from cover to cover. You don't need to struggle with a single book if it's not going in. You can look to outside sources. That also means that number two, you need to forget everything you learned in school about reading because you don't need to fight with a single text without asking for outside help. There is no cheating here. You're not being graded. This is not a final exam in an English lit class. You are just trying to learn for your own betterment. So go and get whatever resources you need and bring them to bear. And finally, drop the guilt because the thing that stops a lot of us from reading those really difficult books is this guilt that we should be able to understand this stuff and we don't. If I go back to my experience with Thus Spoke Zarathustra, my biggest challenge with this book was really that feeling of uh, that imposter syndrome, that feeling of I'm not good enough, I don't get this book. When in reality, if you think about it, I was a 19-year-old kid who had barely read any philosophy in my life, and I picked up one of the most seminal works of philosophy in the world and expected that I was going to have a perfect understanding of it, which was just completely irrational, absurd. Since then, I've read a ton more philosophy, and I can go back to this book and even now, I still don't get 100% of this book, but I can get a lot closer. And if I go back to this book again in five or 10 years, I'll get even closer to understanding it all. That continuous growth, that's what we're looking for here. So don't expect that you need to understand everything on the first go round. Drop the guilt. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to be perfect. If you do that, you can enjoy difficult books and you can start to grow as a person without any of that guilt. And it'll bring some of the fun and some of the joy back into reading. And you don't need to shy away from those things that you thought, oh, that's going to be over my head. So I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the books that you struggled with reading that you eventually managed to overcome? Or what are some of the books that you really tried to tackle and they just defeated you and you couldn't get through them? And is there anything that I shared in this video that made you think, you know what, maybe I could go back and I could give this a shot and it can work. Or maybe you watched this entire video and you said, you know what, nope, still, I don't think I could get through it. And you know what? That's okay too. Life is too short to struggle with things that you don't have time for. You're better off trying something else anyway. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something helpful out of it. And I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Until next time, cheers.